Good morning. My name is Violeta Escandon Correa. Um, I am a third year chemical engineering student, uh, a minoring in sustainable cities as well. Um, and along with some of my peers, Michael and Kylie, um, we're part of the CP4813 city planning class with Dr. Fuentes. Um, and we're actively working with a client in Puerto Rico. His name is Amaury. Um, and the point of our project is to improve, improve um, resiliency and also um, reliability of um, the energy in El Condado, which is located in Puerto Rico. So before I begin, I want to introduce um, some foundational details that amplify the vulnerabilities that are present in Puerto Rico, um, which will show you kind of how unstable the energy sector is. Um, so setting-wise, El Condado is located in San Juan in Puerto Rico. Um, and although it's a small area, um, it is very active. Um, the tourism there is very strong, which means that during the night, they have strong um, electricity uses for restaurants and entertainment services. Um, there's also high-rise buildings. If you were able to see the map, you would see those um, that are bordering all over the coast. Um, and all of these really just paint the picture of where the energy is being used in Puerto Rico. So in terms of the power, the energy sector, so it's controlled by two different companies called Luma and Prepa. Um, and apart from facing some organizational challenges, um, they also face operational and infrastructural issues. Um, and really it's the combination of the absence of um, proper training and the shortage of staffing that these companies have um, and the geographical constraints that Puerto Rico has being a um, urban heat island and also suffering with a lot of different natural disasters um, that lead to a lot of issues with power generation, um, transmission lines collapsing as well. Okay, so um, from these deep rooted issues um, that are connected to pre and post disaster planning, um, as well with some inner government issues. There's also some historical context that kind of sets Puerto Rico apart being an unincorporated territory um, in terms of policies and the degrees of funding that is able to reach these islands. Um, so apart from the funding that they are not able to get and the discrepancies between different um, states here in the US like Texas um, and also when Harvey and Irma, when those hurricanes came, um, we were able to see that big gap of, of how the funding was really distributed. Um, and so with all of these um, deeper issues combined, what we are really focusing on is improving the energy resilience um, and looking to improve the cost of the energy and also the degree of outages that Puerto Rico faces. Um, so the way that we put together how we want to improve this resiliency, it's a very big task because of all of these issues that I've mentioned. Um, we're looking at it from a consumption and demand side and also tackling the supply portion of it. Um, so specifically from the consumption and demand, we're looking at three different proposed solutions. Um, the first is green infrastructure, um, and that is increasing the tree um, coverage in Puerto Rico to try to reduce the temperature of the island itself. So basically when you are facing with energy issues and you don't have enough power, how can we reduce this energy? And that's really what the demand side aims to um, tackle. Also looking at cooling materials. So are there specific um, pavings or specific um, paints that we can cover roofs with to again reduce temperature and therefore increase, uh, reduce demand. Um, additionally, we're tackling it from a behavioral um, intervention point and that's through an informational campaign. And those are passive solutions um, that people can do now again to really drive the uh, consumption of energy that they are faced with. Now, from a supply side, we're really looking to expand their energy options, um, and that is through solar PV um, sunroof. Um, so what we've done so far is look at the solar capacity that, based on all the different roofs that are there and based off the area, and trying to come up with some 20 potential candidates based on just infrastructure as, as, as itself. Um, and through this analysis, we'll also be looking at the financial aspects of it. Um, and what we really want to do with all of these projects is create a layer of feasibility. So 
how would tree planting look like? How would cooling um, materials into these houses look like? How is the feasibility of solar panels from a finance and a technical perspective look like? And where can I start? So that's what we've identified so far. Um, additionally, something else that we really want to implement um, and deliver to our client is a funding guide master source. And basically what this is, is identifying for the people where can they get the money if they have an idea to solve um, these energy resiliency issues. Um, so basically, we'll create a ho like a hopper or a pool of these projects and grants that they can apply to. Um, we will also show them kind of like the benefits that they would get from um, applying to these grants, whether it's like a financial benefit that they can get. Um, and also, we'll have a pool of project proposals that they can go ahead and, and start to, to take on. For example, microgrid plus PV is something that we've talked about. Um, and so these are some project proposals that they'll have at hand tied to where the funding resources come from. Um, and so what we're doing next, we are actually traveling to Puerto Rico for spring break. Um, and we have a general itinerary that's getting to know the land, meeting with different people. But for our project specifically, um, since we are looking to implement these trees and cooling materials, um, we are looking at the vulnerable areas and also doing more surveying to make sure that the energy consumption rates that we've gathered and approximated um, are correct, as well as some interviews with, the, so with people of the community um, trying to see if the solutions that we are implementing um, is something that they already have in place or any of their feedback. Again, this should be a very community-driven um, project.